take one Saturday night game show. Add a tower 80 feet in the air. And eight contestants willing to be thrown off it if they get a question wrong. And what do you get? Very, very, very scared. Welcome to 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Welcome to 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show, the show where just one wrong answer unleashes a day of unbridled terror. To make sure that doesn't happen, our contestants will have to answer each question correctly, make it to the end of the show, and one of them will win 10,000 smackers. But if they can't follow these, frankly, simple rules, we will unleash hell upon them. <laughs> Let's meet the brave people who have no regard for their personal safety and have agreed to play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Oh my word! <laughs> I'm Alison, I'm 36, I'm from Hull. If you want a screamer, I'm your girl. Look from here, look at the size of that. My name's Deepak, I'm 39 years old, I'm from Leeds. I will go home today being number one. I wish I'd never said that actually. I'm James, and I'm a PTI in the Royal Navy. Females are not as intelligent as men. We haven't got to walk up there, have we? If I be against a woman in the final, there's only going to be one winner. Me. End of chat. My name's Katie, and I'm a children's nurse. I absolutely love adrenaline buzzes. Scary the better! One of my hobbies is going to bingo. God knows what I'm going to be like when I'm stood on top of that tower. <laughs> my name is Nathan, I'm 19. I'm the youngest one here, but I'm here to represent the youth of Essex to show them we're not dumb. I can do general knowledge, but in real life, I'm useless. Do you not what? think you're going to win, then? No. My name's Ruth, I'm 29, and I'm a scuba diving instructor. I am frightened of the dark, and I'm frightened of heights. <laughs> Scary. Oh, no. <laughs> My name's Nikki, I'm 49. I just hope I come out with a little bit of dignity in touch. <laughs> but I think that's probably a bit late for that now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm Simon, I'm a published poet, and I'm a part-time adrenaline junkie. I have two daughters, and being an embarrassing dad, they're very concerned that I'm going to make a fool of myself. Yes! Yeah. Let's get it on. Yeah, let's go, back. Hi, guys. Hi, Steve. A very warm welcome to you all. Here's the plan. There are five rounds, and at the end of each one, it's bye-bye to one of you. Whichever one of you still here at the end of the show wins ten grand, a massive side relief, and you'll get to walk off the tower. Right, let's put that general knowledge and your blood pressure to the test in round one. I'm going to ask you all a question and give you eight answers. Seven are right, one is wrong. But first, we need to find out what happens if one of you chooses the wrong answer. It's my co-host, Namon. <laughs> this is exit number 51, Deadly Dangle. The contestant on the platform attached to the wrong answer will have the floor drop from under them. The only way down, a 250-foot zip line. And for my amusement, they're doing it upside down. And off the show they go. Forever. Seriously, we're doing this. That's right, Steve. Go ahead. That's allowed. Yep, that's OK. Yeah, there's something wrong with you lot. Well, apparently that's safe, so let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. I'm about to ask you the first question, but before that, I'm going to give you the answers. Susan Boyle. Andre Agassi. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Kenneth Branagh. Jonathan Ross, Gwen Stefani, George Clooney, Bono. 
Seven of these celebrities were born in the 1960s. Can you select one? Off you go. Make your selections now. Okay. Have you all chosen? Yes. Yeah. Let us begin. Nikki, do you go for? I went for Jonathan Ross. Um, I think he's about the same age as me, and I was born in 1960, so... You a big fan of his? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, let's hope he doesn't let you down, yeah. then. <laughs> okay. Deepak, who'd you go for? I went for Kenneth Branagh. What's your thoughts behind that? I just think he's the right age to oh. be born in the 60s. Yeah, well, good luck with it. Thank you. Ruth, what'd you go for? I picked Andre Agassi. He would have to be at least 40. He looks like he's in his 40s. Nathan, what'd you go for? I went for Andre Agassi. Oh, that's a tiebreak situation waiting to happen. Why did you decide on Andre? My mum's a huge tennis fan, and I remember her talking one time about they're the same age and she was born in the 60s. OK, well, good luck. Alison? I've picked um, Gwen Stefani. Mm, why? I don't think it's the obvious choice, and I think she probably is older than she actually looks. OK, that sounds pretty cunning. Simon? Um, I picked Bono. I'm regretting it now. I think he might be older than I thought at first, but it seemed like a good choice at the time. Katie, who'd you go for? <laughs> I chose Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle, why? Because my husband was born in the 60s, and I remember being on telly, and we were laughing because I said, she's the same age as you. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> James, Steve. what do you go for? I went for Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. Deepak's choice as well. Oh. We're going to have to deal with that situation rather soon. Good luck with it. But I can tell you right now, Nikki, nobody else wanted Jonathan Ross, so he belongs to you. Congratulations. Alison, you got Gwen Stefani, Simon, Bono's with you. Katie, Susan Boyle belongs to you. Why don't you go get dangled, you lot? So that leaves us with two tiebreakers to sort out. Let's deal with Deepak and James for the right to own Kenneth Branagh. Both of you want him, only one of you can have him. That's going to be the person who answers this next question correctly. In which 1964 film does Julie Andrews play a magical <laughs> Deepak? Mary Poppins. A magical children's nanny, it is Mary Poppins, which yes. means Kenneth Branagh is yours. Off you go, sir. Well done. James, I'll leave you to grieve for Kenneth for a moment. Ruth, Nathan, you both want Andre Agassi. Only one of you can have him. Here's your tiebreaker question. Which novel, published in 1969, was written by Mario Puzo and chronicled the life of a fictional mafia family? Ruth? The Godfather. Is correct, which means Andre Agassi is all yours. Off you go. Well done. Nathan? James, back to square one for you guys. Gentlemen, make your choices now, please. Is it going to be Catherine Zeta-Jones or George Clooney? Chosen? Yeah. Nathan, who'd you go for? I went for George Clooney. I just think he looks around the right age. OK, well, good luck with George. James, who'd you go for? I went for Catherine Zeta-Jones. I thought I'd keep it in Wales. She's a look after me. Catherine Zeta-Jones. OK, guys. Well, you both got the answers you wanted. Best of luck. Everyone's got an answer. It's time to see who's staying and who's leaving 101 ways to leave a game show. So, eight answers. Seven are correct. But someone has just selected the wrong answer. That person is about to go flying through the air head first. OK, let's do this. I asked you which celebrities were born in the 1960s. Eight answers. Seven are bang on. One is dead wrong. I can now tell you who picked one of the right answers. With... Gwen Stefani? <laughs> it's Alison. Well done, you're going through the wrong two. Oh, thank God. You're lying out on that bed and you've just got a sheer drop behind you. Thank you. Scary is not the word. The next correct answer is... Get me off! Get me off! 
Kenneth Branagh. Yes! See oh, come on! Good choice. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Knowing that I'm still in the game, knowing I'm still going to win that £10,000, knowing that I'm going to beat James, that's it. That's what's keeping me going. Fantastic. The next celebrity born in the 1960s is... Susan Boyle! Yes! Katie, well done. You threw it around too. Yes! I was thinking back to when my mum was saying, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this, and I was laying there and I was thinking, Mum, you're right, you're always right, right? Didn't I listen to you? Time for another 60s celeb. This time... It's Jonathan Ross. Yes! Born in 1960. <laughs> I was just thinking, I just, okay, I want to get off now. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> next correct answer. And the next person who's born in the 60s is... Bono! Yeah! A popular choice. Yeah! It's horrific. I never want to do it again in my life, ever. <laughs> okay, guys, keep it down, please. I got lives to save over here, okay? <laughs> Three of you left. Ruth, James, and Nathan. Soon to be two after I tell you. Catherine Zeta-Jones. You weren't so sure. Picked her all the same, and you're going through to round two. Well done, James. Release him, guys. Get the bat. Get the bat. See if I could beat me in the tiebreaker. Yeah, I was stuck with Catherine Zeta-Jones. Hey! <laughs> but um, it's not going to happen again. That's for sure. So that leaves Ruth and Nathan. One of you will be joining the others in round two. The other will be leaving the show rapidly in that direction. <laughs> Ruth, you stole Andre Agassi from Nathan in the tiebreaker. Nathan, you got your second choice, George Clooney. How's things, Ruth? You all right? Not really. <laughs> Bit nervous? Very. Not so sure about Andre? No. Nathan, how are you doing over there? I'm going to take that as not so good. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in five, four, three, two, one. Wrong answer. Andre Agassi. <laughs> That was the most blood-curdling scream. <laughs> it was scary. More scary than I thought. <laughs> and I am scared of heights. <laughs> it's confirmed. <laughs> Ruth, I'm afraid you're no longer in the runners for £10,000. Thanks for playing. Oh, look at it. <laughs> well, and guys, seven people through to round two, seven people one step closer to £10,000. Oh, okay, everybody stay calm, although that's going to be difficult when you hear what I'm about to say. One of you is about to leave through our emergency exit, which sounds like fun, but it's really not. You right, Alison? Yeah. Nice to hang out with new friends, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. OK, here we go. I'm going to pick a name from my big barrel of balls. Then I'm going to ask that person a question. Answer correctly and you stay in the game. But get it wrong, it's an 80-foot vertical drop through that hole. Woo! 
ready to snare you in her web at the bottom is Nimone. Hi, Nimone. Hi, Steve. Let's see who's staying and who's leaving 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Okay, guys, here we go. I'm going to pull out the first name from my barrel of balls and I'm going to be asking that person a question to stay in the game. You all right, Nikki? It's an infectious laugh, isn't it? Deepak! Hello, Steve. Which children's TV show features the characters Oscar the Grouch, the Cookie Monster and Big Bird? Sesame Street. Correct, sir. Yes. <laughs> For a moment, spin him. Uh Ball back in the barrel. No guarantee your name won't come out again. Immediately. Katie! <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, <laughs> I'm not looking at you. Can you not wiggle around? No. Okay. <laughs> what do you like with sport? Oh, no. no. Not my strongest. The tennis player, Andy Murray, was born in which UK country? Oh, my God. No idea. Andy Murray. Um, Scotland. Kidding me? You think Andy Murray's from Scotland? Yeah. You're correct. Yes! Well done. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. Spin him. <laughs> Alison. <laughs> to stay in the running for that ten thousand pounds, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world was a statue of the sun god. Helios, known as the Colossus of Ware. I haven't got a clue. Greece. <sighs> Close, but no cigar. I'm afraid I'm going to have to say goodbye. Say goodbye to Alice and everyone. <laughs> Bye, Alison. <laughs> It was Rhodes, which is in Greece. You're so close. <laughs> oh no! I just didn't know the answer. I've seen you look a little bit better, Alison. Oh, I better look attractive. <laughs> so that's Alison gone, but. Don't shed a tear. Time to see who's next in line for an early doors exit in round two. The studio has now moved down a level on this massive tower. In a moment, another difficult question. This time with six answers, five are correct and one is totally wrong. Avoid that one and you'll stay in the game. Napone, what are we doing next? Exit 26 ought to knock some sense into our contestants. Well, one of them at any rate. This is Human Wrecking Ball. The contestant who picks the wrong answer will get a smashing trip backwards at speed, straight through the wall and right off the show. These are concrete, aren't they? Roger that, the moon. Yeah, thought so. So we're now going to smash up our own set, are we? <laughs> That's brilliant. Let's play 101 Ways to Destroy a Game Show. OK, I'm going to ask you a question, but first, I'm going to give you the answers. 
Finnish Spitz, Norwegian Elk Hound, Turkish Van, Alaskan Malamute, Swedish Balhund, Portuguese Pudengo. Five of these are breeds of dog. Can you select one? Six possible answers, but only five are right. Remember, you need to choose wisely if you're not a fan of hurtling backwards through walls, and I don't know anybody who is. Okay, Nikki, what'd you go for? The Alaskan Malamu. Are you a dog woman? I am! <laughs> I've got a friend who has one. Okay. It's a great dog, too. Deepak. I went for the Alaskan Malamu as well. Oh, um, right. I'm still not 100% sure, but... Well, Nikki's 100% sure, so you're going to have to okay. fight that out in the tie break. OK. Good luck, speaking a bit. Nathan, what'd you go for? I went for Swedish Valhund, because it's, um... I thought of Valhalla as in, like, the Norse mythology, and it's hund instead of hound. I'm sold. <laughs> I really am. Simon, what'd you go for? Exactly the same answer for exactly the same reasons. Exactly. What are the yeah. chances? <laughs> it looked really Swedish, Valhund. I thought, well, it's got to be worth a go. OK, <laughs> we'll come and sort that tiebreak out in a moment. Katie, what'd you go for? I went for Norwegian elk hound. What's your thoughts? Well, there's that song, Ain't nothing but a hound dog. Yes. So it must be dog. No? Sounds like pretty crazy logic. Uh, James, what do you go for? Steve, I went for uh, Finnish Spitz. All I could think of was Bob Colleges and Spit the Dog. <laughs> That's all I could think of. Isn't that <laughs> so, so I know it's a dog. I'm not sure it's a real dog. Good news is, James, you're the only person to choose that, so it's yours. And Katie, you're the only person to choose a Norwegian elk hound. So why don't you two go and prepare yourselves to be a human wrecking ball? Okay, Nikki, Deepak, you both want the Alaskan Malamute. Only one of you can have it. That's going to be the person to answer this tiebreaker question correctly. Fingers on buzzers. According to the popular phrase, every dog has its what? Deepak. Every dog has its day. You have your dog, Deepak, and yes! it's an Alaskan Malamute. <laughs> Congratulations. Go join the others. Well done. Thank you. OK, Nathan, Simon, let's sort out this Swedish Valhund situation. Here's a tiebreaker question. In the 1961 animated Disney film, there are 101 of which breed, Nathan? Dalmatians. Of dog, which is a Dalmatian. Well done, the Swedish Valhund is yours. Join the others. OK, you are now both in an exclusive club. It's called the Nobody Wants These Answers Club. <laughs> Two left, Turkish Van, Portuguese Podengo. Both of them might be right. One of them could be wrong. Guys, make a selection now, please. Nikki, what do you go for? Uh, the Portuguese. Let's see what Simon's chosen. Mm -hmm. What do you go for, Simon? Uh, I went for the Turkish van. You went for the Turkish van. I did, but I'm confident that both of them are right, so it's not really a problem. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, there you go. Everybody has an answer. It's time to see who's staying and who's leaving 101 ways to leave a game show. So we've got six answers. Five are right, one is wrong. Who's making it through to round three? And who's making it through a big wall backwards? Let's find out. James. Steve. What's the scoop? What's going down between you and Deepak? Yeah, for sure. Um, Deepak has told me he's coming to a bit of form, but uh, he's going to feel the force. Nice. You'll get your chance in a moment. Good luck. Thank you. Katie? Yes, Steve. Ever been a human wrecking ball before? No. Never? No, right. I'm not going to be. It'll come good. Simon, what's happening? It's all pretty good. Well, it's not all good because you wanted the Swedish Valhund. I did, yes. You ended up with Turkish Van. I was so confident earlier, and now I'm really not. Crossing them for you. Double D pack. Fastest Steve. finger in the West. What's happening, yes. right? I'm very well yourself. I'm very good, I'm very good. good. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all looking good for yourself. As James has already said, I'm finding a little bit of form. I'm winning my tie breaks. Yeah. You know, he thinks he's a bit of competition. He'll be going out soon. Nathan, you okay? Yeah. Good. You wanted the Swedish Valhund. Yeah. You got it. Maybe it's too good to be true, really. Well, we're going to find out very okay. soon. Good luck. Nikki! I can't speak. Look where I am. <laughs> it is kind of scary. There's that winning laugh. 
Do you think you'll be laughing if you were to fly backwards through the snow exit wall? No, I'm worried I'll wee myself. <laughs> Don't wee yourself. You'll rust this lovely metal flooring. OK, good luck. Best of luck, everyone. We're going to do this. I asked you, which of these are breeds of dog? Five are right, one is wrong. The first person safe and going through to round three is... with... Alaskan Malibu. <laughs> it's Diva. <laughs> well done. Come on. It was so satisfying to see James's face looking at me as I was walking off and I just give him this stare and say, down. The next correct answer is... Portuguese Pedango! <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, why am I doing this? The next real dog breed I'm looking for is... A Swedish bow hunt. Nathan, that sound logic ah, is yes. taking you through to round three. Well done. I don't think I'm getting braver. I think I'm getting stupider. Just going on with it. Three of you left, but only one of you is going to be a wrecking ball. The next correct answer is... Finish spit. Yes! James, you can... Get in there, Bob Collegies! Continue your battle with Deepak in round three. Well done. The other three are just collateral damage. Damn it. There's only one winner of this show tonight, and that's me. So, that leaves Katie and Simon. One of you will join the others in round three. The other will be leaving for good. OK, Katie, you chose Norwegian elk hound. You OK, Katie? Seem a bit upset? It's the wind. <laughs> it's not. I am. You don't like the idea of going through that wall no. backwards? No. Something's just clicked in my head and I don't like it. Simon, you chose Turkish van second time round. Yep. And how are you managing? Coping. I think that's the best word I can use. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in... Please, 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 please. Five... Four... Three... Two... One. Wrong answer. Turkish van. <laughs> oh, baby! Check me out, baby! You were sure about your choice and then not so sure. I was wrong. I'm so gutted. I want £10,000 and now I'm not going to get it. <laughs> It's actually a type of cat! Check me out, baby! Woo! Woo! Check me out, baby! <laughs> There's no words to describe what it feels like <laughs> to be a human wrecking ball and to smash through a wall. You know, it's, um, it's a pretty unique experience. <laughs> it's been emotional! Absolutely amazing. One of the best things I've ever done in my life. You know, I recommend it to anyone. Give it a try. Well done, guys. Five contestants remain. Three rounds to go, only one big prize. Let's crunch those numbers. And potentially a contestant in round three. In a moment, I'll ask you another question, this time with five answers. And guess what? One of them will be wrong. But first, it's Nimone. More commonly used by fighter pilots to leave their aircraft in a hurry, ejector seats are an excellent way to get rid of contestants from game shows, as exit number 94 will demonstrate.
Whoever chooses the seat attached to the wrong answer will experience the kind of upward acceleration usually reserved for prototype ejector seats that have yet to be tested on humans. Have any of you ever been a fighter pilot? Nikki? No. Nathan? Okay, just checking. Let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Here are the answers. Diesel engine, Ferris wheel, Geiger counter, Petri dish, trestle table. Four of these inventions were named after their inventor. Do you know which ones? Choose now, please. Remember, get it wrong and you'll be hurtling through the air at the speed of sound, roughly speaking. Nikki, what'd you go for? I went for the Geiger counter. Geiger counter, why? Pretty certain that um, it, it's some Geigerish type person that did the Geiger counter. We'll see, we'll see. Deepak, what'd you go for? I went for exactly the same, the Geiger counter. Um, I think a guy called Geiger did invent this device for measuring radioactivity, so... OK, good luck. Nathan, what'd you go for? I went for the Petri dish. I'm pretty sure it's named after a German physicist. OK, well, all will be revealed quite shortly. Katie, what did you eventually go for? Geiger counter. It's the popular one, this. What are your reasons? Cos Mr Geiger sounds like he could exist. OK, good luck with it. James, what do you go for? I went for trestle table. So you're hoping there is a Mr or Mrs Trestle? I'm hoping so, I'm hoping so. Um, I was tempted with Geiger counter and Petri dish because I think they are actually right answers. However, knowing the crowd I'm in, um, Nathan would have gone for the Petri dish because he's a bit of a, bit of a geek. Mm. And um, the others would have gone for Geiger counter. Well, your logic has paid off because trestle table is yours. You're the only one to choose it. Nathan? Petri dish belongs to you. Why don't you guys go and climb into your ejector seats very carefully, I might add. So we have a three-way between Nikki, Deepak and Katie. They all want this season's must-have item, the Geiger counter. Let's see who's going to get it. Fingers on buzzers. Which scientist is best known for his equation E equals MC squared? Nikki. Einstein. Which is correct. Geiger counter is yours, Nikki. Thank you. Go join the others. Well done. You're both in the running for either diesel engine or Ferris wheel. Both of them might be named after their inventors. Who knows? One of them might be wrong. Guys, make your selection now, please. Chosen? Yep. Deepak, what'd you go for? Gone for Ferris wheel. OK, well, good luck with that. I mean, I'd hate to be somebody who chose diesel engine. What do you go for, Katie? I went for diesel engine. Oh, OK. Um, everybody's got an answer. Who's staying and who's leaving? 101 ways to leave a game show. Five contestants, five answers. Four right, one is wrong. Who will be promoted to wrong four? And who's about to get fired? Straight up in the air. Let's find out. You're all here because you're the best of the best. We're behind you every step of the way. Maverick, Goose, Cougar, Iceman, and Viper. Let's take one of you to the danger zone. I went to the danger zone. Katie, you all right? No, not really. What's uh, going on with your finger there? It's for good luck, I've done it on the last two oh, rounds. Oh, right, and it worked, didn't it? Yeah. Deepak. Steve. Ferris wheel. Um, well, I'm sitting around with a life jacket on. Just waiting to find out. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Nicky. Hey, big boy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How many pairs of shoes do you think you could get with 10,000 big ones? Oh, I'd have so much fun. Mm. I really would. I could just, yeah, shop till I dropped. Nathan, how are you doing, you all right? Yeah, good. Petri dish. Yes. I'm thinking whilst this James and Deepak war rages on, you could sneak around the back and seal the crown. What are you thinking? Hopefully. Hopefully a little civil war between the two of them will knock them out and I'll just exactly. fully sneak in there. James! Steve. Trestle table. Good answer. Have you 
ever thought yourself that maybe they're all right? Actually, yes, I have. However, Nathan, I'm going to stick with the fact that he's a nerd and a geek, and I may form a coalition with Deepak to get him off because he does pose a threat. I asked you which inventions are named after their inventors. Five answers. Four right, one is wrong. I'm now going to reveal one of the correct answers. With... Diesel engine. <laughs> Katie, you're safe. Getting so close to that 10,000 pounds. I'm lost for words. I can't believe I'm here. Man, no. The next correct answer is... Petri dish. In your face, James, more than anything, because he was obviously bad mouthing me, and I was just like, yeah. Nerds will inherit the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so just three of you left now. Deepak, Nikki, James. The next correct answer is. Geiger counter. Get in! Going around four, Nikki. Well done. Oh, I thought you were going to throw me in anyway, just for the hell of it. And I wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> so that leaves us with the big two, Deepak and James. <laughs> Great. One of you is staying and will join the others. The other, leaving for good. That away. Any last words to one another? James, it's been good. It's been emotional, fella. Take care. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in five, four, three, two, one. Wrong answer. Trestle table. <laughs> <laughs> James, it wasn't named after anybody. It was just a table. <laughs> Some people in a lifetime for a moment. <laughs> oh, 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 I feel really gutted for James. Good fella. I want Deepak to win now, in all fairness. Um, he's got to go out there and he's got to take the rest out. Formed a good friendship with him. He's a good lad, he deserves it. But it wasn't to be. That's game over for James, but for you guys, £10,000 balloons. And we're dry. And oh, you're dry. Nice. Here comes round four. Oh, how I miss James. Deepak, you missing James? I'm absolutely gutted, and the answer's yes. <laughs> Nathan, what about yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> In a moment, another question. Now with four answers, three are correct and one is wrong. All you have to do is avoid the wrong answer. To find out what we're doing to you next, it's my co-host, Namon. Four cars, a runway and a ramp. Flipping out. And that's almost the name of our next exit, number 46, Flipping Wreck. The car attached to the wrong answer will take off along the runway at a ridiculous speed hit the ramp, and then literally take off. The car? Oh, that'll be fine. The contestant? Who knows? Well, that's crazy. Let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Here are the answers. Spider-Man. 
Ghost, Men in Black, Die Hard. Three of these films are set in New York. Do you know which ones? The final's in sight, so think very carefully before making your selection. Nikki, what'd you go for? Um, I went for Spider-Man. Have you seen it? Do you know I have. it's set in New York? I, I just seem to think that it was, because, I mean, he was... I'm, I'm sure he swung around the Empire State Building. Fingers crossed. Deepak, what'd you go for? I chose Die Hard. Die Hard, why? Um, I believe in the first film, Bruce Willis, um, he was in New York waiting for his wife to come over from L.A. OK, yeah. Could it been the other way around? <laughs> oh, God. Nathan, what'd you go for? I also went for Spider-Man. Do you know for a fact that's set in New York? Yes. I've seen it, and I can just remember the buildings and stuff. <laughs> OK. Good luck. Katie, what'd you go for? I went for Spider-Man. <laughs> this is one that I'm almost certain on. The only one. It's incredible that we're this far into the game, and <laughs> finally you're half kind of certain you got a right answer. I won't be able to keep it now. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. I'll tell you what. Let's uh, get rid of Deepak for a moment because you're the only person to choose Die Hard. So why don't you go sit in a flipping wreck? Thank you. <laughs> so, Nikki, Nathan, Katie, this is huge. You all seem to think this film was definitely set in New York. I'm going to ask you a tiebreaker question. Whoever gets it right, you got Spider-Man. Simple as that. Fingers on buzzers, please. Which New York-based comedy series featured the characters... Katie. Friends. Featured the characters Rachel Green, Ross Geller, and <laughs> Joey Zuliani. That was extraordinary. It is Friends. Congratulations. <laughs> Spider-Man is yours. Go join Deepak in a flipping wreck. OK, guys, back to square one for you two. Ghost and Men in Black remain. Both of them may be set in New York. One of them mm. might not be, so choose carefully. Make your selections now, please. Chosen? What'd you go for, Nikki? I went for Ghost this time. Fan of the film? Yeah, I quite like it. Yeah, it's a girly film. Nathan, what'd you go for? I also went for Ghost. Ah, right. <laughs> But guys, you both want it. Only one of you can have it. I can ask you a tiebreaker question. Fingers on buzzers for Ghost. Here we go. The climax of which 1933 film features New York's Empire State... Nikki. King Kong! Features New York's Empire State Building and a giant ape. Of course, it is King Kong. Which Sorry. means... Sorry. Don't apologise. This is your moment. Enjoy it. Thank you so much, Mr. Jones. Which means, Nathan, Men in Black belongs to you. What's your thoughts? I don't know. I wanted Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> They've got an answer each. It's time to see who's staying and who's about to flip out of 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Four beaten cars and four unbeaten contestants. But there are only three places in the final. So who's about to go for the ride of their life right off the show? So this is it. Three right answers. One dangerously wrong answer that will turn one of your worlds upside down. Katie? Yes? Do you think you can go on to win this thing? I'm very confident now. Yeah? The only time this year I've been confident. Good for you. Good for you. Nikki, looking good, by the way. Loving this outfit. No, does it make my bum look big? It doesn't, no, it looks... <laughs> Looks peachy. <laughs> Nathan, you ended up with Men in Black. Let me ask you this. Are you more of a passenger or a driver? Passenger, definitely. I don't have my licence, so I always have to put my faith in the driver. So I'll do the same today. And then there's Deepak with Die Hard. Yes. Fancy a ride in my car? No, thanks. You're OK. All right. And there's only two seats in there. All right. <laughs> I asked you which of these films were set in New York. Three are right, one is wrong. 
I can now reveal the three people who are going through to the final and will be playing for £10,000. The first correct answer is... Spider-Man. Yes! Thank you! Thank you, Steve! I'm in the final! Yes! Yes, thank you so much! I, I can't believe it. And everybody at home and the children in work will never believe I'm in the final. The next film set in New York, and the next person to gain a place in the final is... with... Ghost. <laughs> it's you, Nikki. <laughs> Come join Bobby Katie. Rocks. <laughs> <gasps> oh, I'm in the final! <laughs> oh, I'm taking him home with me emotionally draining I've got to say it's just like <laughs> so that leaves us with Nathan and Deepak one of you will be joining the others in the final the other will be leaving for good drivers start your engines please I asked you which of these films were set in New York. Nathan, you ended up with Men in Black. Deepak, you chose Die Hard. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in... Five... Four... Three... Two... One! Wrong answer! Die Hard! Accident, which is my first accident ever in about 20 years worth of driving. Yeah, I'm still trembling now. How disappointing to go out at this stage. Oh, so close to the final with an answer that I knew. I knew I got it wrong straight away. No die-hard ending for you. No Bruce Willis, but I'm a Deepak Cho. Yippee ki yay, Deepak. Let me out. <laughs> Steve Jones, I'm still here. Nathan, welcome to the final, sir. Yeah! Hey. <laughs> well done. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> well done. Action man, Nathan. In fact, congratulations oh, to you all. <laughs> Let's do the final. So, here we are, the final. One of you is about to be £10,000 richer. Put another way, two of you are not. Nikki, you <laughs> have laughed your way through this entire show. Right, right on cue. <laughs> Were you expecting to get this far? No! Just, I, I'm, my husband will be so proud of me. <laughs> I'm proud of you. We're all proud Thank of you. Thank you. I'm almost speechless. Good luck. Thank you. You know what, Nathan? You intrigue me. You're, you're wise beyond your years. I think I'd like to know what you would do with £10,000. Um, I'm going to use the money to fund my education to go study nursing. So you're going to use that money to help other people? Yes. What a guy. Best of luck. Katie. Yes? Confident? Yes. You think you could win this? Yes. You weren't expecting to be here, were you? No. <laughs> Katie, the very best of luck. And thank you to all you guys. I've had a wonderful day with you.
Okay, this time the game is different, so listen carefully. I'm going to ask one last question and give you three answers. Two of the answers are completely and utterly wrong. Only one answer is correct. You need to find that one correct answer if you want to win the big money. Here's Namon to explain exactly what's going to happen if you pick a wrong answer. There are three precariously perched trapdoors. The trapdoor attached to the correct answer stays shut and the person standing on it goes home victorious. But the two trapdoors attached to the wrong answers will snap open, sending those losing contestants into freefall. At last, we've reached exit 101, the trapdoor. the dreaded trapdoors. I wish I knew what was down there. Let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. For £10,000, here are the answers. The 1966 World Cup Final. The 1977 Morecambe and Wise Christmas Show. The 1981 Wedding of Charles and Diana. Here's a question. One of these events was watched by a UK TV audience of over 30 million people, according to the British Film Institute. Which one? Make your selections now, please. Remember, this time you're looking for the one correct answer. Keep it, hold on to it, and a mouth-watering £10,000 will be yours. Have you all chosen? Yeah. Nikki, let's begin with you. Charles and Diana. Okay. I don't think that many people had a TV for the World Cup. Mm. Well, let's see what Nathan chose. I also chose the wedding of Charles and Diana. OK, what's your thoughts behind that? Um, also the same thing about the TVs in 1966. Katie, what about yourself? I also went for Charles and Diana's <laughs> wedding. <laughs> wow. OK, what are your reasons? Well, I like Diana, mm. so... Hopefully. It seemed like the logical choice. Yeah. You all want the 1981 wedding of Charles and Diana. This potentially could be worth £10,000. So I'll ask you a tiebreaker question. Whoever gets it right, has Charles and Diana. Here we go. Fingers on buzzers, please. One of the highest rating television shows in history was the episode of Dallas where viewers discovered... Nathan. Who shot JR? Incorrect. Was the episode of Dallas where viewers discovered who shot JR? But what was JR's surname? Katie. Ewing. Ewing is correct, which means well you have Charles and Diana's 1981 wedding. Well done. Take your trap door, please. We have the small matter of Nikki and Nathan to deal with. Obviously, Charles and Diana was a must-have answer, but you never know. The 1966 World Cup final or the 1977 Morecambe and Wise Christmas show may have had over 30 million viewers. Have we chosen? Yep. Nikki, what'd you go for this time? I went for Eric and Ernie. Okay. Nathan, what'd you go for? I also chose Morecambe and Wise. So you're not going to make it easy for Nikki. Guys, here comes your tiebreaker question. Fingers on buzzers, please. Which TV soap opera aired its first ever live episode in February 2010? Nikki. EastEnders. Is correct, which means Morecambe and Wise, the Christmas special, is yours. <laughs> Nathan, a little downcast. Yeah. You ended up with the, the World Cup final, 1966. Any last words? Get me a towel. <laughs> Well, everybody's got their answer for the final time. Let's see who's leaving and who's winning 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Three answers, two are wrong, one is right, 10 grand at stake. Let's see who's gonna win it. Okay, guys, this is it. Final destination. I asked you which TV event was watched by over 30 million people. Nathan. Yes. You're a bit 
disappointed with your answer? Yeah, I've had a good day. We've tried my best. Found out what I didn't know anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck, man. Nikki. <laughs> Do you think you'll be laughing if those doors open and you're plummeting towards that icy water? I wouldn't put it past you. God! Then again, I wouldn't put it past you to win £10,000. Katie, you're the reason why they're so upset. You must be elated with your answer. Everybody wanted it. That's a good sign, surely. That's what's making me feel quite positive right now, because it was a guess. Okay. This is it, guys. I'm going to tell you a wrong answer in... Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Wrong answer. Morecambe and Wise. Oh my God! I asked you which TV event was watched by over 30 million people. Nathan, you got left with the answer nobody wanted. The 1966 World Cup final. Katie? You won the answer that everybody wanted. The Charles and Diana wedding. One of you is going to be tonight's champion. That means you'll be £10,000 richer. The other will be leaving. Much the same way Nikki did. I'm going to reveal the right answer in five. Four. Three. Two. One. Right answer. 1966 World Cup final. Ah! You have just won the ten thousand pounds. Yes. And you've defeated the 101 Tower. Yes. I am assuming you're pretty happy. Congratulations. Win £10,000 on 100 Mum Ways to do the game show. From myself and the Mum, good night. Would you like to take the stairs? I think the myth. He's a bright boy, really is. Dreams come true next on BBC One Scotland with the help of John Barrowman and Enrique Iglesias. Or if you flick over to BBC Three, you'll find a big star in a reasonable car. It's Tom Cruise, no less, on Top Gear.